Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix New Jersey. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with William Huey Jensen. We're ready for the semifinals. Ben Stark versus Corey Baumeister. Corey's on four color Sahili. Ben is representing the lone copy of a non four color Sahili, non Mardu vehicles deck in our top eight. He's on Jund Energy Aggro. Kind of a cool deck, uh, Huey. How, how would you describe this deck? It's. It's like a different take on the black-green deck. It doesn't try to play a slow, controlling game and, and, and sort of grind you down. It, it tries to just do really, I would say, more broken and explosive things. Use its, uses its cards in combination a lot better. Things like Greenbelt mm. Rampager, Long Tusk Cub, um, Winding Constrictor, and, and just make really big creatures really quickly. So here's a Long Tusk Cub for Stark. No answer for Baumeister with only the one mana. Long Tusk Cub, pretty potent card, but it can get completely out of hand, and Baumeister certainly is aware of this, and he's going to take care of that before any bad things can happen. There's a Green Belt Rampager for Stark. If he wants to replay it, he can actually have it stick on the battlefield, and that's exactly what he does. So a nice 3-4 attacker for Ben. He also has a Hissing Quagmire as the follow-up land. And the four toughness really big. You can even see it in play here with it looks like Corey having a copy of Oath of Chandra in his hand. Not quite enough to finish off a four toughness creature. Rogue Refiner for Baumeister. Yeah, those harness lightnings are a precious commodity for this uh, four-color Sahili deck. They don't run a ton in the way of removal, especially in the main deck. They've got three Chandra and the four Sh Harness Lightning plus three Oath of Chandra. So a reasonable amount, but they have quite a few slots dedicated to kind of grinding. So a quick turn from Ben Stark there. He's going to attack for three. No blocks from Baumeister. He drops to 17. And Ben's going to play Scrap Heap Scrounger after that. And really a testament to the power of Scrap Heap Scrounger. Like, this does this deck doesn't have synergies. Mm. I, I guess it has unlicensed disintegration. But, yeah. you know, there's no Heart of Kieran's to crew. There's no Toolcraft Exemplars. No Inventor's Apprentices to pump. The card is just so strong. A 3-2 two for two that can come back four, five, six times in a game. So I think that Ben also did half of a Greenbelt Rampager there. Yeah, he did. Okay, so that's where the energy came from. And it also represents one of the cards in Ben's hand that Corey will know about now. Here's Oath of Nyssa from Baumeister. Rogue Refiner number two hits the battlefield here for Baumeister. Rogue Refiner doing really good work here in Standard. It's my kind of card right there, too. In the meantime, Ben Stark... Goes up to two energy pre-combat. Using his uh, green belt rampager to generate one energy and then attacking with both creatures. So you see Ben do that, not for the energy, but because he has triggered Revolt and able to fatal push one of the two Rogue Refiners after the double block from Corey Baumeister. Lots of subtle synergies here in this deck, and that's one of the cool ones.
See what Corey wants to do at 14 life. Facing down nine power now from Ben Stark. Another rogue refiner for Baumeister. That's the third one played this game. That has kept that hand nicely stocked. But Ben's creature's just much bigger. They are much bigger, but that's a lot of cards in hand for Baumeister, too. Because he can start to double block here. Try to manage these resources that he's built up with his uh, four-color deck here. And if Baumeister has an untapped land, he is threatening the combo. Two pieces away, but... Yeah, he doesn't even need the land if uh, the Servant of the Conduit survives. Right. Double block, and Ben giving respect there to the Servant of the Conduit. Killing it. And there's a walking ballista. So another way for Ben Stark to keep Corey off of the combo. He also got to finish off the Rogue Refiner with the one plus one plus one counter coming off of the ballista, leaving it at one. But doesn't look like much sitting on the battlefield. But that is a difference between Corey being able to go off with the combo and not. Still, Corey with a lot of cards, a lot of you know, a reasonable amount of life, and looks like a lot of room to maneuver. Potentially the ability here to use Oath of Chandra on the Walking Ballista, play Felidar Guardian, blink it, and also take out the Scrap Heap Scrounger, at yeah, least for a turn. be a heck of a sequence. So Corey's going to fall down to seven. Still a lot of options for Baumeister here. Let's see what he comes up with. Guardian. And now Ben's got to rebuild. Okay, here's a Rishkar, Pima Renegade now from Ben Stark. That does get the Greenbelt Rampager up to four power. And did Corey just flash the combo? What happened there? I guess Ben must have said go. Yeah, that's what I thought I saw. But why didn't Ben attack? Was he trying to right. represent something? It's possible. We'll, we'll try to get an update there. I'm a... Assuming that Ben couldn't win from that spot outright, though. So Corey must have just flashed him a piece of the combo there. Yeah, okay. So that was it. Corey did win with the combo. Well, uh, clearly, that but... That game, yeah. It just didn't even look like Ben had finished his turn. That's all. Yeah, it did look like that to me. But it looked like uh, Corey just flashed him to Sahili, and that earned him the game. Corey Baumeister takes game one... We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have more semifinals here from New Jersey. See you in a bit.
And welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix New Jersey. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with William Huey Jensen. And uh, we're working our way through the semifinals. Ben Stark versus Corey Baumeister. There's Ben. There's Corey. Corey's the one who's up a game here. He was able to assemble his Sahili Rai and Felidar Guardian combo to kill Ben. Ben's draw was reasonable, but pretty fair. Yep. We saw no whining constrictors from him, which is the one that one, the best one of the card. cards that kind of sets it all off. Yeah. He was still able to apply significant pressure to Corey. But I got to say, when that third Rogue Refiner hit for Corey Baumeister, it was like, wow, that's going to be tough. Yeah, you saw really the power of the four-color Sahili deck. Corey was able to, to play creatures, set up double blocks, and, and sort of get through Ben's removal that way. Like, Ben can't just let all his creatures trade with Rogue Refiners. He has opportunities for two-for-ones, and he has to take them. And then all of a sudden, Corey just goes, oh, combo, that's it, I win. Yep. All right, so let's see what happens here in game two. Is it going to be Corey Baumeister? Or is it going to be Ben Stark? Ben's going to be on the play here. It looks like he's thinking about his mulligan decision. The very important early turns from the Jund Energy Aggro deck. And uh, it looks like Ben's decided, nope. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this one. Has Corey found a keeper? Looks like it. like Ben's thinking about how close that one was. You can see in the background there's Paul Rietzel and Ben Friedman battling it out. That's Friedman with the cowboy hat. <laughs> and the Friedman jersey. And the Friedman jersey. He really does look like a <laughs> bull rider. Bull rider, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with that outfit. His opponent, Paul Rietzel, is the one with no cowboy hat and the normal clothes. Let's see if Ben can keep this six here. And he says, I keep it. All right. He's going to put a card on the bottom. But we are underway in our second game. And that card he flashed there was a green belt rampager, so he's got an energy out of the deal. And Corey Baumeister is going to kick things off with an oath of Nissa on his side of the table. With an untapped green source, Ben can just play the Green Belt Rampager, but it has a lot of other roles in the deck as well. And oftentimes he prefers to get the Long Tusk Cub down because that's a train that once it gets rolling can be very difficult to deal with. Not a lot else to do on the first turn, though. That's right. Corey, with his Oath of Nyssa, finds the Healy Rye off of the basic forest. And there it is, Long Tusk Cub. So this is an important turn right away. Corey would love to have a red mana source in some way to kill that cub. Ben's on one energy, so he won't be able to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And this is the window when he really needs to react to that. Okay, an ether hub does count as red, and he even has the answer for it, an Oath of Chandra. Long Tusk Cub always demanding an answer right away or, or just threatening getting completely out of control. Very yeah. quickly. Yeah, if, if if Corey didn't have an answer for it and Ben played a whining constrictor, it gets silly how fast the thing gets out of hand. Even if Ben had only a forest, he yes. could he could play the rampager, make it a three three, attack, use that two energy, make it a four four, play rampager two more times, make it a five five. That's without the constrictor. That's with just a, just the rampager. And if he went forest and the constrictor, it's absurd what he can do. He gets two energy per Rampager. It's just dumb. All right. So here's Long Tusk Cub number two, though. And Corey's going to start things off with an Oath of Nyssa. And that could be important. This is the second Oath of Nyssa. Of course, that one's going to go to the graveyard. But once again, Corey has to have an answer. And he doesn't. No, no red yet. 
Yeah, he'll be able to to cast that the Chandra. Chandra, but he doesn't have red mana for any burn spells. And like I said, I think Ben able to to get to either get or at least threaten to get Long Tusk Cub out of range here of Chandra. You know, Corey could go ahead and block if he if could. He, it would be a chump block. But instead, Ben's going to diversify out a little bit. Sure. He's going to assume that the Chandra is going to be able to kill one of these creatures. Well, part of the problem is it looks like Ben doesn't have any more lands. Yeah, he is missing land drops now. Remember, Ben's on a mulligan to six this game. I don't know if... Corey has a Guardian in his hand, but Guardian on that Oath of Nyssa killing Long Tusk Cub and having a blocker for Grand Gr Greenbelt Rampager seems very strong here. Yeah, on the Oath of Chandra, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doesn't look like that's an option for Corey. Actually, it still could be. I think he's going to cast a Tomb with Ether here. So he could still do that play. Yeah. Oh, there's the planes that he was looking for. Right on the bottom of his library. Oh, there it is, Huey, the exact play that you described, and this one slipping away from Ben Stark very quickly. Another top eight for him, but this it's could be a tough one to win for Particularly this devastating because now Corey's just threatening a one-card lethal with a three-mana Sahili, and Ben, whether or not he has anything, like it's so hard to leave mana up. Yes. For the entire game, right. especially when you're strained on, you know, yeah. constrained on mana. Ben's going to attack with his green belt rampage. Of course, he's not going to risk the block. And as you can see, Ben has no problem tapping out for this card because walking ballista does protect him from the combo. Lots of cards left in hand here for Corey Baumeister. I mean, he's got a decent amount. of mana to work with as well. So this is going to be a serious uphill battle for Ben Stark if he's going to win this game. For Corey, he just wants to make sure that he doesn't make any misplays or take the wrong line of play here because he has such a big advantage at this point with, with uh, Ben missing drop. Mana right. Drops. I mean, Corey's goal at this point is simply to get that walking ballista off the board. Yeah. We know he has Chandra. And Ben knows too. Right. Um, but just trading your Chandra for a Ballista, not the greatest, but Corey might go ahead and do it anyway. There's Chandra. See what he does with Chandra here. Showing said he's just going to plush Chandra here, Huey. Sure. Finds in a tune with Ether. And he's going to decline to cast it and just do two damage to Ben, it looks like. Seems fine. He's got to have some other use for this mana. Just going to develop his board a little bit with the sure. second copy of Servant of the Conduit. Yeah, he's just sort of starting to lean on Ben here. Added a Planeswalker and a creature to the battlefield this turn. Did a couple of damage even. And don't forget that Oath of Chandra, Corey. That's right. It's going to trigger two. That was four damage. Yeah. 
Chand yeah. Oath of Chandra should do extra damage when it's a Chandra. Then. Yeah, it should. It really should. Greenbelt Rampager is going to attack once again, but Corey wants to protect his Felidar Guardian, so he's just going to chump block. He wants to protect his life total, too. There's a Greenbelt Rampager. That get, that's Ben Stark 1 energy. And Ben passes the turn and back. So, Ben is representing Fatal Push here. He could turn that on with his Walking Ballista, but that also just shuts off the combo itself. I don't think it would be unreasonable for Ben to, j or excuse me, for Corey to just Chandra the Greenbelt Rampager, depending on his hand. That's that seems good too. Card is being kind of annoying to him. Yeah. Although I guess he does know Ben has another one in reserve. Even more reason. Yeah. But no, he's going to get that walking ballista off the battlefield. Chandra will take an extra ping there. But she still survives it, and that's the key part of Corey waiting an extra turn. And we have Sahili Rai. Seen how this works. Yeah, unless Ben has Fatal Push. And, and he, he doesn't. doesn't. He tried to represent it, but he didn't have it in his hand. Just a whole handful of spells. And Ben Stark's going to take an exit here. Corey Baumeister is your first finalist here in New Jersey. Four-color Sahili. Book it in the finals. It's in there. Take a look at our first finalist there. Ben's going to have to settle for yet another GP top eight finish here, but no victory for him this time. Nope. He's won GPs before. At least one. I think he's won three. This is off the top of my head, though. But Corey really looking to run it up here and uh, see who he's going to meet in the finals. Welcome back to the booth here at Grand Prix, New Jersey. That's William Huey Jensen. I'm Marshall Seckler. We've, we've been here all day. Yep. And uh, we've been recording matches. I, I think they might end up on YouTube. Uh, you know, we recorded them so that we could show them after we came over from Barcelona in between rounds. But as it turned out... We had some good ones today, too. We had some good ones, yeah. As it turned out, Barcelona ran almost right into our top eight, the end of their tournament. Almost was, perfectly timed, yeah. yeah. So we just decided, hey, let's just go right into the top eight. But we've still got those, and yeah, I think they're going to go on YouTube so that uh, in case you miss them, you're going to be able to see those. Now, what we're going to do here, though, is we're going to take a break because we're going to get set up for the finals, and uh, when we come back, we're going to have two players left playing for $10,000 and one trophy here in New Jersey. Don't you go anywhere.